And there's a well-established link between high glucose and oxidative stress through multiple mechanisms, including through the increased production of reactive oxygen species by our mitochondria. One striking example of the interplay between oxidation and high glucose comes from a study examining the effect of consuming oxidized oils like seed oils. Now, first of all, understand that the consumption of oxidized oils results in the oxidized compounds being packaged into a, another lipoprotein called chylomicron, whereupon it enters your circulation. And this too, no doubt, goes some way to explaining the poor results of trials like the Women's Health Initiative, where encouraging seed oil consumption increased heart disease. So this study measured the level of circulating oxidation stress in subjects following the consumption of oxidized linoleic acid, which is an omega-6 fat. And the two left columns represent the subjects with normal glucose levels, and the right-hand column shows subjects with high blood glucose levels. Not only were the oxidation levels much higher in the group with poor glucose control, but the oxidation products persisted for three days, which was nine times longer than those with normal sugar levels. Not surprisingly then, high glucose levels also result in the destruction of the glycocalyx. This study found a 50% loss of the glycocalyx after exposure to high glucose levels for only six hours. And I really can't stress this slide enough. High blood glucose, especially oscillating glucose, is bad for your arteries. And it's maddening when I see so much effort being put into putting people on statins and things like that, while ignoring the elephant in the room that is hyperglycemia. Now, moving on, there's numerous other potential sources of oxidative stress, and all of them are bad for the heart. Take particulate pollution, for example. Particles are able to pass through the lungs, which are quite permeable, and enter our circulation, whereupon they can cause significant oxidative damage. This explains the UK Biobank study findings that Britons living in the most polluted areas were 27% more likely to develop heart failure. Heavy metal pollution like lead is particularly potent, lead atoms being just the right size to be inhaled and enter the circulation. In fact, this study from 2018 concluded that one in six deaths, or 18% of the 2.3 million deaths occurring annually in the United States are attributable to lead. And remember, it all comes back to oxidation. We also have to consider pollutants that we essentially ingest, such as mercury or microplastics. After ingestion, they can both contribute to oxidative stress and atherosclerosis. For example, this study from 2024 found that out of 257 surgically removed atherosclerotic plaques, 58.4% of them contained polyethylene, and 12.1% also contained polyvinyl chloride. The plaques containing these microplastics were significantly more inflamed, and perhaps more significantly, were associated with a 4.5 times increased risk of major adverse cardiovascular events over the following 34 months. There's also growing evidence linking exposure to per and polyfluoral alkyl substances, commonly known as forever chemicals. These contribute to cardiovascular disease and oxidation stress. The point is our modern environment is not what it once was. Amongst inhaled particulate pollution, leaching amalgam fillings, pesticide-laden foods, PFAS chemicals, microplastic contaminated water, we're under oxidative attack like never before. 